Dual function LED car bulbs are not always plug and play. Come join me on my adventure getting these daytime running light switch back turn signals to function correctly. The parts we're looking at today are superbrightleds.com, part number 1157, AW60, SA. On the bottom here, we have the incandescent 1157 dual filament bulb for a size comparison. Here's the LED bulb. It's got 60 LEDs total, 8 panels of 6 each along the outside of the barrel, and then 12 on the nose and all in a package no bigger than the incandescent it replaces. Here's how the lights are supposed to look. Parking light or running light side is bright white. Turn signal only is bright amber. If power is applied to both sides at once, it defaults to amber turn signal, but after a short delay, when power is reapplied, it goes back to white. But when installed in the car, flashing white, no amber. Very strange, and not what it's supposed to do. When I test them on the bench, both of these bulbs function correctly. However, as you saw in the car, some weird stuff happens, because it expects something like this. The car also lacks a dedicated front running light switch, so I'll be adding one of those. The light system on this car has three settings. Off, which is self-explanatory, parking lights, which come on regardless of where the key is, and headlights on. We need to add a third function to this, tapped in to activate when it's in the off position. After some pondering, I've come up with a relatively simple solution that will give me front daytime running lights using the switchbacks, proper turn signals also using the switchbacks, without negatively affecting the rest of the car's wiring. Here's how it'll work. The car's headlight switch has three positions. Off, which isn't shown, parking lights, and headlights. Parking lights lights up the front turn signal lights, and the tail lights and the license plate lights. The headlight position obviously adds in the low beams. We need to keep this functionality exactly the same as it was before but add a few things. I am going to run separate wires to the front daytime running lights. This will be controlled through a relay, taking power directly from the battery through a appropriately sized fuse. This is quite important. There are three conditions in which these front lights need to be illuminated. Daytime running light mode, headlight switch is in position zero, parking lights in the rear, and the headlights are both out, but I want the front lights running, so there will be a separate manual switch that I add. However, if that switch is on, we need those lights to go out when the key is removed, so that switch will take power from an ignition or accessory switch circuit. The front lights also need to illuminate when the parking lights are on or the headlights are on. To do that, I will take power tapped off the signal line from the headlight switch one from the parking light wire through a diode, and one from the headlight wire through a diode. The diode prevents any of these three from backfeeding, so the daytime running light switch doesn't accidentally turn on headlights or parking lights, and the parking light switch doesn't accidentally turn on the headlights as well. The switchbacks only pull 200 milliamps each for 400 milliamps total, so I can use a compact 10 amp 12 volt coil relay instead of a much larger 40 amp standard automotive relay. Here's the relay module set up. Yellow and purple are the isolated inputs that cannot be backfed. Blue is non-isolated, that's going to come from the manual switch, which doesn't care about getting backfed. And all three will activate the relay, making my multimeter beep. There it is, all packaged up with tape. It's not pretty, but it's not going to short out on anything. I've back probed the headlight switch and figured out what wires I need to tap into. Position 2, dual white wire, that's parking lights. Position 9, dual yellow wire, that's the headlights. And position 7, single blue wire with a yellow stripe, 
That is ignition switched power. Here's the back of the headlight switch. Position two with the dual white wire for parking lights. On the other side, position nine, dual yellow for the headlights. It's pretty easy to run wires from the headlight switch down to where I want them. You can see the strobe light shining through right up there once I remove this panel. While I normally don't like this kind of quick connect, I will make an exception here because these are relatively low power relay control wires. Another reason to use them is there is very little slack in this harness and I do not want to have to take the entire dashboard apart just to get this install done. Got the wires all set up with their conduit running from here all the way down into the footwell. You can see it flopping around down there. Got the wires for the manual daytime running light switch over here. Blue wire is ground for the indicator light on the switch. And we got a pair of red wires which are currently taped off. Those will feature in a future video. Down in the footwell here, we have the controller for the air horn. And I've made a nice little slot for the rest of the wires to come through, because the relay can live in this enclosure as well. Volvo provides an accessory connector underneath the dash for a variety of things, but it includes, in position one, battery power at up to 20 amps. I'll be tapping into that to feed my relay and the front running lights. This is far more for the sound than the visuals. Key is off. Switch going to parking lights. Back to off. Hear the relay clicking. I will be making use of the same firewall pass-through conduit and the same sheath I installed for the signal wires for the air horn. The running light power wire comes up through the conduit into the driver's side front corner and it will come out here. It will split into two. One will go to the driver's side running light. The other will go across the front of the car to the passenger side. Here's the connector for the running light and turn signal. This white wire, which I've actually had to repair before, is, I believe, the running light. Switch is on, so we get battery voltage. The middle is ground, and the other side, the green wire, is turn signal, which is also off. I'll be using the spade terminal quick connects so I can easily revert to a stock wiring configuration if I run into problems with my setup. Got the driver's side wired up to my system. Let us see if it works. Key and ignition. Parking lights. Headlights. Parking lights. Off. Turn signal. Turn signal and parking lights. Turn signal, parking lights and headlights. That all works. However, with the LED installed, we still get some weird operation. The white light works fine as a parking light, but the turn signal does not operate unless the parking lights or the headlights are on as well. So, same behavior as before despite my circuit. What gives? I need to probe at this connector to see what I need to do to make the running lights behave correctly. However, my digital multimeter cannot respond quickly enough to the rapid on-off pulses of the turn signal, especially since it will really freak out when it doesn't sense the load of the correct number of bulbs. I need an analog voltmeter, but I don't have one. Solution? Milliamp meter with a 1K resistor. Got the turn signal flashing away, so let's see what we get on this one. As expected, rapid pulsing. On the ground, we get nothing, and on the running light, we get nothing. I suspect that this system will ground the turn signal wire when it is not energized with battery voltage. Okay, turn signal flashing away. this weird, silly car. The white wire provides power for the running light. The black wire is a ground, but it's not the common. And the green wire is a common, 
that switches between positive and ground to turn the turn signal on and off. Even with the series diode and a dedicated ground, the LED did not work right. This requires some more wiring modifications. Luckily, I've also back-probed the turn signal flasher module. It has a left out and a right out on it, since it also handles the four-way hazard flashers. The flasher unit is located in the central console, and it can be pulled out and comes with a fair bit of slack. Lucky me. Going to have to tap into position 5 for the left turn signal, that's two green wires, and position 4, the right turn signal, that's two blue wires with green stripes. Here's the back of the flasher unit, where I tapped off the wires to restore function to the front turn signals. Got the green wires here for the left turn signal that goes to the red wire with the yellow tape. And on this side, we have blue wire with green stripe. That's the right turn signal going to the black wire with yellow tape. Normally, I do not like to tap off wires on a circuit for providing power to something new, but in this case, the turn signal circuit is already fused to provide the right amount of power, so I don't have to worry about it. The turn signal wires come out of there, up over on top of the knee bolster. Right in the middle here, I added a terminal block just so I could run the turn signal tap side and the wires out to the front of the car separately and then connect them here. I've run a custom wire from the turn signal flasher unit. I have provided a solid battery negative ground to the green wire and I have my custom running light circuit that I installed earlier. Let's see if this still works. Running light, turn signal, back to running light. Running lights off, turn signal, turn signal off. That is how the switchback is supposed to work.